Hello, this is Philosophy One. This is our first lecture. I'm going to keep it very short, maybe 10 or 12 minutes. And uh, I'll do a lot of short videos during the quarter. I think you'll probably like that better. Okay, today I'm just basically going to introduce the, uh, the course. Uh, hopefully everybody knows that we're using this book here, uh, Introducing Philosophy, by, edited by Robert Solomon, uh, Higgins, and Martin. Oxford University Press. I'm using the 10th edition. If you have the 11th edition, that's okay. It's a little, the pages are a little different and it's added, there's a few differences, but it, everything in it, that's in here is also in the 11th edition. So the 10th edition or the 11th edition is okay. Um, and also we're using, uh, there's a couple of the books that's on the syllabus. Uh, one is by Jim Holt, Why Does the World Exist? And we'll be reading that throughout the course, maybe I think I've assigned maybe 10 or 12 pages, 15 pages, sometimes a week. We won't read the whole book, but a lot of it. Uh, so let me say a little about philosophy, just to kind of introduce the class. Philosophy, etymologically, probably most of you know this, goes back to the Greek, um, philosophia, the love of wisdom. That doesn't really help too much to explain what philosophy is, because it's very vague, but that's etymologically what it means exactly what philosophy is, is itself a philosophical question. So if you ask uh, what philosophy is, really there's no answer to that. Uh, if you want to know what biology is, there's an answer to that. It's the science of life. If you want to know what chemistry is, there's a definition for that everybody agrees on. If you want to know ma what mathematics is, there's no disagreement on that. Philosophy though, uh, if you look in a dictionary, it will give you a definition, but among philosophers, uh, there is no agreement. Some philosophers think that uh, uh, philosophy is continuous with science. Some think, some think it has nothing to do with science. Uh, there are many different views of philosophy. Some think that philosophy is in the, in the business of solving problems. Uh, Bertrand Russell was of, of that opinion. Other people like uh, Wittgenstein uh, do not believe, don't believe there are any philosophical problems, okay, that there, 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 are, there are no problems to be solved. So philosophy, basically, I think the best uh, uh, way to think of philosophy, it deals, philosophy deals with fundamental questions of, uh, of ex existence. It deals with foundational questions. So in, for example, in mathematics, for example, uh, if you take a math course, you'll use numbers and mathematicians use numbers all the time, but philosophers of mathematics will ask the question, what is a number? Okay, and uh, that's not an easy answer, e easy question to answer. Uh, what, are, what is a number? Uh, if you asked mathematicians, most mathematicians would not be able to give you a good answer. And the best answer uh, 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 was given uh, about 100 years ago, or a little more than 100 years ago, by, by the, a philosopher called Frege, F-R-E-G-E, uh, who uh, I, I won't get go into the details, but he gave a definition of numbers that seems to be, you know, to uh, appeal to most uh, uh, mathematicians and philosophers nowadays. Uh, so anyway, philosophy, uh, basically philosophy is a, as what philosophy, if you want to know what philosophy is, just read philosophers. If you want to know what philosophy is, read Plato, Aristotle, Locke, Hume, Kant, read the great philosophers. That's what they, that's what philosophy is. It de what the questions that they deal with are the questions that philosophy deals with. If you ask what is the essence of philosophy, you're probably not going to get an answer uh, because there probably is no single essence of philosophy. Philosophy is simply a way of thinking about the world. Um, the first philosopher uh, that anyone knows of was named Thales, T H A L E S, and he lived around 600 BC in uh, off the coast of what is nowadays uh, Asia Minor. And uh, he was uh, the first philosopher. And what made him the first philosopher was he was the first person that anybody knows of who asked the question, what is the world made of? So he was asking what, what nowadays are called scientific questions. And what was important about Thales was that he did not appeal to tradition or to religion or to mythology or to Homer. He appealed to his sense perception and reason itself. So philosophy is committed to reason. Uh, what I want to say today, uh, uh, the, the, the main point I want to make today is 
I'm going to give you uh, Russell, Bertrand Russell. Bertrand Russell, uh, so, uh, as we go through these lectures, I'll often mention philosophers, so you'll become familiar with the names. Uh, the greatest uh, uh, English philosopher in the 20th century is Bertrand Russell. So this is a book, he, a very famous book he wrote, The History of Western Philosophy. So I'm going to talk a little about the beginning of it, um, the, his, his understanding of, of philosophy. Bertrand Russell sees philosophy as he calls it a no man's land between, on the one hand, science, and on the other hand, theology. Uh, he says that uh, science deal all definite knowledge is uh, comes under the rubric of science. Uh, science is in the business of knowing things. Uh, so if you op if you take a course in physics or chemistry, biology, you'll learn a lot of facts uh, th that are considered to be knowledge, and so these are put in textbooks. And they're passed on. Obviously, there's a lot, science is continually learning new things, but they have they know how to get there. So, science all definite knowledge begins with science. All definite knowledge belongs to science. On the other hand, you have theology, uh, which deals with questions that science cannot answer. And uh, what science, what theology does, is it gives you dogmatic answers to those questions. For example, science will not deal with the question of God because it's not something that can be empirically verified. Theology, on the other hand, does deal with the question of God, and it will give you dogmatic answers. It will say if Christian theology, uh, Jewish theology, Islamic theology, will will talk about God as existing. So they claim to know that God does exist. Science doesn't say anything about it. Philosophy, on the other hand, is be, is uh, so theology deals with things that. Uh, to which we don't have definite answers, but it gives dogmatic it gives it gives dogmatic answers to those questions based upon revelation or usually revelation, like usually from the in in monotheistic religions it, the the revelation is in the Bible, in Islam it would be in the Quran and so on. Um, science cannot appeal to revelation. Science is based upon observation and reason. Theology appeals to revelation. Russell says that philosophy is the no man's land between science and theology. And I'll, I'll quote him from his book. Like theology, like theology, philosophy consists of speculations uh, on matters as to which a definite knowledge, definite knowledge has so far been unascertainable. So in that sense, philosophy is like theology because it deals with things that we don't have definite answers to, but like science, it appeals to human reason rather than to authority, whether that of a tradition or a revelation. So philosophy is the no man's land between science and theology. It deals with questions that science cannot answer, but it doesn't appeal to revelation to get the answer to those questions. It just appeals to reason. And Russell, Bertrand Russell says, all the questions of most interest to speculative minds are such as science cannot answer. And the confident answers of theologians no longer seem so convincing as they did in former centuries. Okay, so what are some of these questions that philosophy deals with that are so important? Russell says these are the most important questions that any speculative mind, any basically anyone that has a brain to think, you know, you, the, life is full of mysteries and wonders, and philosophy deals with those questions. It was Aristotle said philosophy begins in wonder, and Plato also said it. Whitehead and a modern a philosopher said, Why, uh, philosophy begins in wonders and ends in wonder. So it begins and end, ends in wonder. So what are some of these questions that speculative minds need answers to, or they're questions that science cannot answer? What one question would be, one, one question that comes to mind is, what is the world made out of? Uh, are there minds? Are there physical bodies? You know, what are, or is everything mental? Is everything physical? Are there minds? Are there bodies? This is a question that, and many answers, all the answer, different possibilities, all possible answers have been given to that question. Descartes, for example, believed that there are minds, uh, what do you call, or, or souls, minds, same thing for Descartes, 
and bodies, material things. Uh, if you're an idealist like Hegel or Barclay they, or Leibniz, they don't believe that there are any material bodies at all. Everything is mental. If you're a materialist, you believe everything is physical or a physical force. Okay, so that's an, uh, one question that bothers people. Another question is, does the universe have, have a purpose? Does life have a purpose? Does God exist? These are all philosophical questions. Do we have free will? And all these we're going to be talking, we'll talk about them in the, in, during the quarter. Do we have free will? Uh, do we have a soul? Uh, uh, what is the connection between the mind and the brain? Or do we have a mind? Or is just we have a brain? What's If we do, what's the connection? Uh, what is it to be a self? Or do we have a self? These are all philosophical questions that philosophy deals with. Science does not answer. And theology, Russell says, will give you dogmatic answer answers to, which uh, in, unless you're going to believe in the revelation, uh, uh, it's not going to help. Philosophy deals with appeals to reason alone, reason and sense perception. Okay, so... Let me say, uh, uh, and here's another quotation from Russell. Science tells us what we can know, but what we can know is very little. And if we forget how much we cannot know, we become insensitive to the things of very great importance. So the problem of science is that it, it does give us knowledge, like Einstein equals MC squared and so on and so on. You know, look in these science books, you know, a lot of facts. But the most important questions of life, it, they don't address. So science tells us what we can know, but we can know very little. This is what Russell says, and if we forget how much we cannot know, we become insensitive to the things of very great importance. Theology, on the other hand, Russell says, induces a dogmatic belief that we have knowledge where, in fact, we have ignorance, and by so doing generates a kind of impertinent insolence towards the universe. And then Russell continues, it is not good either to forget the questions that philosophy asks or to persuade ourselves that we have found indubitable, that means certain, indubitable answers to them. To teach how to live without certainty and yet without being paralyzed by hesitation is perhaps, Russell says, the chief thing that philosophy in our age can still do for those who study it. I think I'll leave it at that. I mean, this is my just a, a first introductory, you know, kind of little mini lecture, I guess. Um, I wanted to get something posted. Um, I, I'm going to keep my lectures fairly, I don't think uh, anything will, I'll, I'll keep them under a half an hour. And uh, that way, I think it'll be easier for you. Okay, so that's uh, the, uh, the first lecture. It's kind of an introduction, just a very brief introduction. And uh, I'll be posting more during the week and coming weeks. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.